Hello, my name is Denton Lim, and I am performing Rebecca Lang's Captured in Color and Other Brief Stories. Chapter 4 Bad days, we buy them, we sell them, good prices all. Keep your eyes open, my lad, and keep them sharp. Misery is what you're looking for. Misery's our business. Since it's your first day out, let's keep it simple. I know a charming little village with cobblestone streets and a steeple church. It should do the trick. What's that? You think the town looks too sweet for misery? Bah! What do you know? You're just an apprentice, and a fool one at that. See that boy under the apple tree? All moody and moping, kicking at the roots. He's in love, I wager. Just had a fight with his sweetheart. I'll harvest him. You stay by the cart and watch. Oh, good sir. I see much suffering in the face of one so young and strong. Pray tell, what ails you? I see... Dancing with another man? A quarrel. Well, lovers' tiffs are bound to happen. But if this fight is truly plucking at the lute strings of your heart, perhaps I may be of service. Now, I'm just a simple hobgoblin, but I do have a wee bit of magic. Behold this wooden funnel. I have infused it with the power to extract all sting from your memory. You will still remember the fight, but it will be like remembering, uh, for example, last week's news of the king's missing daughter. The fact will remain, but the emotion will be gone. You'll be clear-headed, unburdened by the pain. Are you interested? Price? Price, you say? Oh, toot, toot. Such things are trifling to me. Well, if you insist. Five copper pieces. Two? Good sir, do you see my son and Ziskis standing at the cart? What would I tell his mother? Even hobgoblins must eat. Oh, very well. Three copper pieces, and the bargains struck. And Ziskis, bring a bottle. Now, good sir, if you'll just sit, tilt your head to the side. Yes, yes, all the way down. And Ziskis bottle. Pardon me. Now, if you'll put your ear to the funnel. There we go. See how it all pours out. Red as blood. That anger. It spins and thrashes as if it were alive. Uh, don't worry. And Ziskis will dispose of it. That will be three copper pieces. 
Thank you, good sir, for your business. See how simple it was to... Ancestors! What are you doing? Fool boy, don't pour that out. You think I went to all the trouble for three lousy coppers? Bah! No, my lad, that red liquid's valuable. That's passion. That's emotion. That's the stuff of life. We keep that until we meet the lad again. Some years into the future. Perhaps when his sweetheart's dead. What do you think he'll pay then? To recall the flush in his lover's cheeks, the dulcet sounds of her scolding voice. It won't be coppers, that's for sure. Of course, it takes years. What's the good of being hobgoblin if you can't wait a half a century for a deal to turn out? Now, mark that bottle and put it in the cart. It's your turn. See that housewife? Crumbling a loaf of bread to feed to the chickens? Get her to sell us the rest of her afternoon. Oh, wait, wait. Here's a pair of pretty new shoes. They might tempt her to make the exchange. If she agrees, put the narrow end of the funnel into her ear and pour in this vial of silver dream mites. They'll buzz around. They'll buzz inside her brain, gather her account of the day, and return to the bottle by evening, bellies full of memory. But don't, for the love of gold, tell her they're mites. Say, it's fairy dust. If she asks, tell her that the fairy dust will make her as calm as a cloud floating across the sky. The bill collector will come, and the baby will cry, and the rats will invade the barn. But none of those things will bother her come evening. Her day will feel fuzzy as a dream. Bought it, did she? Uh, it's the shoes. Housewives loves new shoes. What do we get out of this deal? Why, we get it all. The housework, the tedium, the stiff back, the bleary eyes, the quick kiss her husband gives her on his way back to the field, the bouquet her daughter picks her, the coo of her newborn babe. I know a princess trapped alone in tower with rooms full of jewels who will give us a cart full of silver slippers. Just a gossip with alewives and hold the newborn close to her chest. That's why, if possible, try to get them to give over their day in advance. Once I knew a man. A scholar by trade who'd been falsely accused of stealing from the king. He was sent to the highest court to plead for his life. Let me tell you, it took me little effort to persuade him to give up that day. And what should happen? But a dear old friend arrived out of nowhere with proof of the scholar's innocence. The king apologized and gave him a hundred pieces of gold as recompense. It was the best day of that man's life, and he couldn't enjoy a wit of it. What's that? You've heard of this story before? Well, it's a good one. That's why I tell it. Fifty gold coins he paid me to get back his day, and he's a wiser man for it. Whenever I come to his town, we meet at the beer hall and chat about the foolishness of men. But he's never given me another moment of his life. He's a rare one. Not everyone learns. And a good thing, too. Oh, we'd be broke. Where to next? Men plowing fields. Schoolboys gazing out the window. That girl our lover boy was moping about earlier. This village is full of good, honest folk, and some 
Not so honest. One rule, my boy, I must insist upon. Never knowingly bargain with the wicked. For their days are poison, and we don't want that leaking onto our good merchandise. Hmm. Who's this? Come here, sweetie. Don't be shy. Hobgoblins don't bite. No matter what your mother told you. Eh? You haven't gotten a mother anymore? And your father's dead too? Your uncle drank away your inheritance and makes you keep house from morning till night? And what happens if you don't finish your chores? Oh, poor child. No, I'm afraid that's not the sort of bad day we're interested in. Can't do much with it, you see. But don't cry. I have something better than a deal. And this kiss. Go to the back of cart and open the trunk. Fetch me the bottle marked cast. Now, my dear girl, sit here on the step. This bottle contains the weak of a boy about your age who climbed a tree too high for him and broke his leg. He had to stay in Big Feather bed for a week. Horribly bored he was. But his mother fed him soup, and his sister read him lessons, and his best friend collected bugs for him. He didn't appreciate his bad days. But you, little miss, you just my. Whenever you feel down, pull off the cork and the memories will come misting out. Lean into vapor and they'll appear in your mind, fresh as a dew drop. N no, no, I'd not accept a copper from you, even if you had one to give. I've been saving this memory for someone special, and I think you fit the Bill. Now be off! And remember, this is our little secret. If I find you've told the other children, I shall be very angry. Sweet child, isn't she, Anziscus? Just about breaks my heart. Miseries are business, my lad. Make no mistake about that. But it's the petty misery of everyday life. Soon, you'll come to recognize the many flavors, the nuances, the irritants, the jostling, the nosebleeds, the stubbed toes, and the snubbed invitations. But sometimes you come across genuine misery. The kind that doesn't disappear in a day, a week, a year. Such misery is like a bog, and the person stuck in it sinks deeper with each passing day. When you come across those people, my boy, be kind to them. Be generous. Give them a smile and a sympathetic ear. For otherwise, you will be miserable. And unlike these humans, we cannot pour our troubles into a bottle, nor breathe in someone else's happiness. Our days belong to us. But live a good life, an honest life, a compassionate life, and you'll always be satisfied. There now, that's enough chatter. The days still young, and the troubles are aplenty, with no end to folk eager to rid themselves of them. But in every bad day, there's some chance of happiness, if you have sharp eyes to see it. All that chatter. I'm hungry. Even a hobgoblin has to eat. But I'm no hobgoblin. Thanks everyone for watching and experiencing that with me. That was probably my first 
actual voiceover character work. And I would like to thank Rebecca Lang, the author and writer, for creating these short stories that are really, really like. <laughs> I'm a big fan of hers, so. All her links will be in the description. Um, you can find her on Facebook, uh, Instagram. She has a website. I'll have that on, in the description. And you can find her books, and she has lots of books. She's a, she's a writer on Amazon and other uh, book markets out there. Vivid Fable, Bringing Original Stories to Life is my new series. And uh, I just wanted to make it happen so that I can help fellow artists like Rebecca Lang and myself to actually present our work in a more visual style. Yeah, so that it doesn't have to remain in the page all the time. Uh, yeah, so uh, again, thank you for watching. Please stay inspired. And uh, I'll see you next time.